Welcome to Wild West Garage. My name's Morgan. And I'm standing in front of a 2015 GMC Sierra. It's a half ton, I guess. And I'm gonna put a, a lift kit in it. It's uh, the fellow that owns this truck uh, supplied, uh, I think it's a rough country lift kit. And yeah, it is a rough country. And uh, three inch lift. And he's got some fancy uh, uh, shocks that go with the kit. So uh, he spent all the money on this one. So let's get into it. All right, so I've removed the cross member here. That's the cross member right there. And the reason for that is that the front diff has to be lowered down with these blocks. A little looks like about an inch inch or so maybe a little bit more than an inch lowering so uh, <clears throat> so another thing you got to do is right there those two fins on on the diff have to be cut off because it's going to interfere with this part of the frame so I'm going to go in there with a the reciprocating saw and cut those off and uh yeah then i'll then i'll uh it says in the instructions you got to disconnect the um electric steering um not sh exactly sure why um, i'm not disconnecting any of the steering linkage so uh anyways i'm just a little concerned that this solenoid or whatever it is on the uh, yeah, it's a solenoid for it to disengage the uh, front diff or to engage and disengage <clears throat> it's gonna it's gonna be hitting this wiring here and it's already stretched as far as it can go because there's a there's a ground strap on it but I don't know it's, it's it's pretty tight it's gonna be pretty tight all this Space here is going to be taken up once I lower this uh, diff down. I don't know, it's going to get real close here too. It's kind of a goofy, goofy setup, but we'll see what happens. So I got those fins cut off. And it's kind of interesting. So here's the picture, right? But really the thing sitting in the truck like this and see how they've got that black area marked out if you cut that much of that out, out of there you'd be in to the inside of the case and you'd have oil running out all over the place so just be careful if you're gonna do this you can see where the case is and uh, you know that's that's about as much as you can cut off I'm gonna file this a little bit more because if you stick this here, this is the spacer, right? It's 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 like it's less than a quarter inch away from the from the frame, and so this is the spot here where it's going to touch. It's the highest point. So you know, I'm not really. I mean, I guess an eighth of an inch is okay. I I guess. I mean, this I didn't design the kit. So. I guess I know what you're doing, right? So you can see I've got that filed off flush with the case. And uh, if I knew how thick the case was, I might buy a little bit more, but I don't, so I'm gonna stop there. Okay, I'm doing I'm trying to do this step to lower the front diff down. And right here. This is the, these are the bolts they say to use, okay? So this is, see? 275 BAG3. Oh, it says BAG6. <laughs> oh, boy. So, anyways, I don't have a BAG6. I've got a BAG2. These look more like the bolts. See, this, these are the bolts I took out. And these are the bolts they want me to use. 
you know, I need longer bolts. So these must be the bolts here. So, thank you instructions. So you can see this, uh, let's set this light up here. So you can see, there we go. So right up in here, what I was talking about, this, this wiring loom, there's this one here. This main looks like main power going to this steering unit. And then there's another one up there and it's hard into this solenoid. It's really pushing hard onto it. And you can see there's a strap there, right there where my right where I'm pointing. So I'm gonna cut that and so that can come down further. Now I can pull that down, I think. So there's another one over here I'm going to cut as well. That'll give me a little more slack. Right here. And then I can move that wire away, somewhat away from the... Uh, well, maybe I can't actually. Got to go kind of down in between this main power cable here, which is really held on here tightly too. tie wrap up in there and pull it down with that and tie it to these these wires here let's tie every, all this stuff together okay there we go so nothing's touching now I just wrapped you can see this one tie wrap here wrapped the bundle of wires together and then I just put a big tire well, I had to use two but I put it right around this motor here whatever this thing is I guess it's a motor and pulled you can't really see up in there but I pulled see right where my finger is there that white piece there uh, was touching so I pulled the, I pulled that wire down away from this white part here the corner of it so I'm happy with that now of course there's nothing about that in, in the instructions so they I guess they're not not I don't think they're concerned about it, obviously, but I was, so I had to fix it. And another thing I did when, uh, see, see, see up in this area here, there's not much of a gap here. So when I tighten this bolt here, I put the pry bar in here and I pried this all back. Because the holes in the frame are slotted a little bit. So I pried this back so I'd get more clearance here. Because this this front diff is mounted on the rubber mounts here. So, you know, that tells me that this thing's going to move around a little bit. So I didn't want anything touching. So I've got good clearance on it, everything now. I'm happy with it. So I can uh, go ahead and, and here's that. Here's this part here. I was talking about the fins before. It turns out I got a good, I got a good, uh, looks like about, yeah, it's well over a quarter, close to three eighths. So that's good. So for this step where they say to cut this hole out of the cross member, they give you the measurement from here to here and from here here but they don't give it this measurement so I'm just kind of guessing going by the pictures how much I have to take out of there and I, I made this hole overall a little bit smaller than like this dimension here than they they asked for I figured I could always make it bigger if I need to so I'm gonna try it on there now and see what it looks like and I also drilled the corners out first I figured square corners equals crack down the road, so the round corner will spread the load out. Less chance of a crack. 
So I guess I should have tried this up in here first. I really don't know why they wanted so much cut out of this thing. But, uh, maybe it torques quite a bit, I don't know. I hope it doesn't move that much. But See the top, there's lots of room. But right here, where this Right in this area right here, I'm going to grind this down a little bit more in that spot, just to clear this here, it sticks out quite a bit. So, you know, a template would have been nice, then you'd have to guess. Okay, there you go. I think that's sufficient. And instead of grinding that, I just took a ball of peen hammer and bashed it down. I figured the less material I remove from this cross member, the better. So, I don't think that's going to touch anything. Unless you're jumping it. Alright, here's something else that's annoying. So this is the factory, you know, the mud shield or whatever you want to call it. And the skid plate, it's a piece of plastic. But uh, <clears throat> it fastened on to the, see there's this screw hole here. Get my light. See, see that right there? There's a screw hole. Screw hole right there. And that's, the bolt goes through this hole into that. And then there's another one down there, goes into that, right there, see, but you don't use this anymore, that's just scrap metal because they supply you with this thing, because the, uh, the diff has dropped down an inch or so, so they put this on there now, and there's no provision to fasten this onto it. So I'm gonna have to uh, come up with some way of doing that. Okay, here it is installed. I suppose I could drill and tap that hole there, but I'm not going to. There was a hole in the frame here and a hole in the cover there, so I'll just put a tie wrap on there, heavy duty tie wrap that's holding that up. Of course, these screws went on in over here, the screws went out and out there, and those flaps I left on that piece I cut out, they're overlapping that. And then I threw a, another tie wrap around here to hold it up there. So, I think that's gonna work not in the instructions. I'm sure the guys that sold them this kit have a cover that goes on here that they could have sold them to fit all this properly but it's not in the back of the truck so we had to make this one work. So I got everything stripped off this side that I need to take off and uh, in the instruction book it says to disconnect the steering. You don't really need to do that. At least I haven't had to do it to this point. Uh, getting the, uh, the strut out of there. It doesn't just, you know, you got to kind of wiggle it around and spin it around. Like screw the spring out until you get, you know, to down here. And then you just wiggle it around and it comes out. So... Now I'm ready to start putting the new stuff in. So here's everything uh, loosely assembled. So this is a bit of a, a juggling act here. So this, the cartridge or the reservoir, the remote reservoir, you gotta hold it up, like feed it all through, through the uh, opening in the lower control arm and then 
So I actually had some help. My son helped me. He held on to the strut and I fed that through there. Fed it up through here. And uh, wasn't so bad. I don't know how I'm gonna do the other side because I'm, I'm alone today, so. And then <clears throat> before I took this apart, I made marks on all the uh, adjusters. This one has a plastic insert in it, so it went right back to where it was originally. But anyways, I'm just trying to put this back as close to what it was when I took it apart because uh, I, I can't do a wheel alignment here, so I'm just gonna get it close and then the fellow can take it somewhere and get that done. So um, <clears throat> anyways, it, it goes it goes pretty easy. It's, uh, Nothing, nothing too complicated. I think the most complicated part was the uh, lowering the, the diff down, messing around with that. But it wasn't really complicated. It was just a little more difficult. This is this is easy work here. Okay, so I've got everything put back together here, more or less. Uh, I just have to reconnect the sway bar link, but I'm not going to do that until I get the other side done. Um, so what? A couple things. So this hose here, I wasn't sure how, like this bracket is. Uh, see this bracket here for the for the reservoir. So I wasn't sure if it was supposed to go like that or like this. So anyways, I went online and all the pictures they showed of these things, this bracket's facing up. So, but then I did see some installs where that bracket's facing down. So, but I just thought uh, I want to get it as far up and away from the wheel as I can. I don't want any interference issues. So that's how it turned out right there. And then uh, this hose was kind of torturing itself. There was a lot of tension on it. It was all kind of twisted up. So I just loosened this nut here and just let it come back to where it's kind of just, you know, it's, it's nice and free. So, I never like to have twists and hydraulic lines. And what else? So then uh, the uh, ABS wire, uh, you see that? See that thing there? There's two holes in this plate here. And so this, this is supposed to go back like about you know, half an inch. So what I ended up doing, there's another stud there just to kind of keep it from turning. I put that in the hole this is supposed to go in, and then I put a tie wrap through the back hole just to hold it. So it's nice and solid now. It's just a little bit too tight um, when, uh, when it's back where it originally was. So, and then uh, this bracket here, also, I just pushed, it's kind of a Z bend. Comes along, goes up and then out, and then this plastic piece snaps into it. I just kind of shoved that all back a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. So, you know, now everything's kind of loose. It's not, it's not being strained. So that's good. So that's, that's where we're at. And then of course, I talked about my marks I made on the, the adjusters. I gotta tighten that up now, and then uh, I'm gonna go on to the other side. One thing I really don't like about this this arrangement or this setup now is uh, see how much angle there is on that steering arm. You know how, how much drop it has. So to me, that's really ho hokey. Like that's really haywire. That should be up here, so it's more straight. Because what's gonna happen is when you get suspension travel that's that the arc of this is going to swing out and it's going to you're going to get bump steer so i mean this this thing is so stiff i've got it jacked up see there's a gap there between the pad on the hoist and the frame and it hardly moves i had to i had to wind this spring right up to the top to get it to move. When I first tried to put this together to get the upper ball joint in, it uh, I couldn't get it to move. 
And it was lifting the truck and the spring wasn't compressing because there's so much preload on it. Oh, and another thing, there's a sleeve that goes in here on the stem of the ball joint, which is, you know, whatever. Couldn't they have put the right size stem on the ball joint? <laughs> Anyways, and then see this nice little black cap? This pries off and there's a grease nipple under there. So that's, that's good. So make sure you grease that. Yeah, so it's going pretty good. So you see that pin right there? That's uh, for the wheel alignment. Um, I don't want to call them cams. And so that pin goes in that slot there and that's how, so depending on where that's positioned, see you got that slot there, it moves the bolt in and out. So that pin, I had this all put together with a new control arm and I noticed that pin was loose. It was flopping around. So I just cleaned the backside of it up and you know, tapped it in there and then put a couple of spots on, or three little spot welds on it. You know, if this was my truck, I would have just left it. I wouldn't have worried about it, but it's not my truck. And it's got to go to a wheel alignment shop. So I didn't want the guy to have any grief. So there you go, fixed. Another thing I want to mention here is um, when I tighten these upper control arm bolts, I stuck my finger in here. So see how this is, it's just sitting here. It, it's floating, right? It's not up against the stop. So I wanted to have it in kind of a neutral position. And, and when I did the other side, I just kind of guessed at where this would be when the truck's sitting on the ground just static like and uh, I, I pretty much nailed it when, when the truck's sitting down on the ground there's about there's one finger of space here between this but this is a, uh, a limit like limits the suspension from going down too far so uh, anyways I didn't want that so, so the idea of that is you want the, the bushing, the rubber bushing to be like in the middle position, right? So when it goes one way or the other, it's not overstressing it one way. You know what I mean? So if I tighten this down too far one way, when it, when it deflects the other way, it's going to be torquing that rubber too far one way. So you want to kind of get it, you know, more or less in the middle of the, of the travel. Here's another thing that's a little annoying and it could have been easily fixed or had a, a, there's an easy solution, but you know, these guys spend all this money on, uh, or I should say the manufacturer spends all this money on development, developing these fancy, you know, shock absorbers. And then they drop the ball on, on the details. So this, the original, struts in this thing and I'll show you had they have studs see so they have studs on the on the mount so <clears throat> so you know General Motors you know they they doubled up on on this a little bit so what they did is they made for the wiring, you see, the, see that, see this thing right here? That presses onto the top of the stud and holds all this wiring. So now I've got three, three of these on this side, two on the other side that don't have a home. Actually, there's another thing right there. I don't know if you can see that. See that, that thing right there? That goes over the stud as well. This goes on top of it. So now there's no place to put this stud. So what I'm going to end up having to do is I'm going to uh, probably drill a hole in the in the um, the outer, uh, you know, like the wheelhouse liner, and I'll just tie this wiring up to the side here, and then just t kind of tie it all together. So it's you know it's probably not going to go anywhere, but it's just annoying that you know all they had to do is make. Uh, a bolt with a stud on it or put studs in the in the mount and I you know just like the factory ones were
just doesn't make any sense. And this is the part number for the strut. And then uh, these upper control arms. That's the part number for them. Putting in, uh, I've got this other, this is the, uh, this is the uh, rear, rear, uh, yeah, the shackles and the, uh, and the blocks for the rear. Putting them in, so that's the, that's the, obviously the part number for those parts. And I'm putting in uh, some fancy rear shocks too. And here they are. Okay, there, rear shocks. So there it is, all installed. Pretty straightforward stuff, nothing too exciting. Um, so I was concerned about these uh, ABS wires. They'd be uh, too short, but they seem okay. Like they're not, uh, the suspension is hanging down as far as it can go. And they're not, they're not super tight or anything. I mean, they're obviously not as loose as they were before. It's only a two inch lift, really in reality at the back. These are three inch blocks, but I took a one inch block out the factory one inch block. So yeah, so that worked out. Everything went back. Only thing I did differently was uh, on the back. I, I did bend this brake uh, bracket here this for the flex hoses. I bent that up a little, just a little bit, maybe 10 degrees or so. Um, and then there was a bracket on, uh, I'm gonna see if I can find it. This bracket right here for the hard brake cables. Hangs down on the frame and the cables go through there. And it was right, uh, right there. You can see, you can see where it uh, was mounted. Right there. And then it went around the cables here. But, you know, it's just, it's just, that was the only thing that was too, hanging down too far. And it was making this really tight. So, uh, you see, I just put a couple tie wraps around these two cables, hold them together. I think that'll be fine. It's got a hanger right there. It's attached to the rear diff right there. So I think we'll be good. So yeah, so there they are. All shiny and new. Only thing I'm concerned about is because the, the rod is on the bottom, that's going to get all smashed by rocks if you're going on gravel roads. So the, uh, the owner needs to come up with something. Maybe he can buy a boot and can put it on there. Because that's going to be that's going to be junk in no time. Other than that, the rear, I guess, you know, the rear, the rear part of this, like the rear suspension part of this job went really well. There's no, there was nothing back here that I was really disappointed in. Other than the fact there's no, there's no boot on that, you know thousand dollar shock right there well, I guess it's a thousand dollars for the pair but you know that's for the money you think they would have supplied a boot but anyways that's my only complaint all right so that was a little different uh, not a bad little job actually uh, I spread it out over three days I guess I didn't do too much work the first day I had a buddy well yeah, I had a buddy drop by. Left his truck here. So, uh, spend a little time with him doing other stuff. So, anyways, uh, yeah, so that, uh, and then the, the second day I did, you know, you know four or five hours, and, and then power went out. And so, the third uh, day, five hours or so, for off. a total of 14 hours, truck including had the truck all the way up changing the brake pads on, the hoist. on all four so, wheels. Really wasn't much I could do, and it was so windy that I didn't, you know, there was, it was dark in here, I didn't, want, I didn't want to open the doors, it would just made a mess of the place. 
So uh, anyway, so that's done. And I guess, you know, if, if you watch the video, you know uh, what I didn't like about the, the conversion. Um, you know, really just, it was just details like wiring and that kind of stuff that, you know, had to be taken care of. And uh, what else? Oh, I noticed when I backed it out of here, when I was taking the corner around the shop, I had it, had it locked over and there's a wheel weight on the right side rim that rubbed on the upper control arm. So I don't know if that will go away when the wheel alignment gets done. I, I kind of doubt it just because I think the wheels are kind of kicked out at the top as it is. So that would give it more clearance to the control arm. But um, I guess we'll see. I'll have to tell the guy about it just so he knows when he hears that noise that he's going to be cleaning his wheel weight off his rim. And then the instructions. The instructions were kind of not good. Like they, they gave, there was instructions with the, here's, here's one of them, but it wasn't for the parts that we had. So, well, it's, you know, some of it is relevant, but some of it isn't. So like this is, this is a knuckle kit. We didn't have knuckles, so. Anyway, we got it done. And it worked out pretty good. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for this truck.